Welcome back for my second video in my Unity UI drop down menu tutorial. In this one, we're going to build on the previous menu we built in order to make a dynamic menu. We'll be able to use this menu to build a menu from any collection, so a list or a dictionary or anything like that. If you haven't seen my first tutorial, I'll put a link at the bottom of the screen so you can watch it. Since we're doing this all dynamically, the first thing we need to do is make those buttons prefabs. We just need one prefab. We can now go ahead and delete the buttons since they're not going to be part of our menu. Now if this one's heavily script based, so we're going to need to add a script. I like to add my UI scripts to the canvas. Um, it just makes them all easier to find and keeps them all together with the menu if I ever copy or move the menu. Um, however, you can add them wherever you like. I'll call this one menu. You should probably call yours something a little more descriptive. So the exercise we're going to go through here is creating a dynamic menu that will detect the resolutions available and then let the user choose between them. We can't build this menu in advance like we did with the static menu because we don't know in advance what resolutions will be available on the device we're running in. First we'll set up an array. Um, I'm going to use an array but you can use any of the different collections the same principle will apply. We'll also get rid of update the update function because this menu is entirely going to happen in the start. However, if you wanted the menu to change during the game, there's no reason you couldn't use the update or on disable. We'll start off by getting all of the resolutions that are available. We just get that from the screen.resolutions. That'll fill our array, so now we have something to work with in our menu. Now we're going to loop over each item in that array and make a menu button for each item. This is just a standard for loop um, that will just go through and do whatever's in the brackets on each item in that array. First up, we need to instantiate the button. And we're going to save this button in a variable because we're going to do a few things to it. So instantiate our button prefab. We're not going to worry about giving it a position or a rotation because they'll all be taken of care of by our layout elements that we added previously. We'll cast it to a game object. We'll also add a button prefab that we can um, edit via the inspector. I'm using serialize field instead of public because this prevents other scripts from getting to that. I want to be able to change it in the inspector. I don't want to change it at anywhere else. So on that button, we're going to get component, and we're going to grab the text component. That's actually a typo. I'll fix it later. We should be using get component and children. Dot text, and we're going to set that text to whatever resolution we're using. In order to use the text component, we actually need to add using Unity Engine UI at the top. Namespaces are new in 4.6, they just help to keep everything separate. So we're going to set the text to the first resolution. Now because the resolution structure doesn't have a very good toString function, we're going to create our own helper method called res to string. Let's go ahead and write that now. It's a fairly straightforward method. Its return type is string. And it's just going to take one argument, which is a resolution. It 
and it's just going to it's only a single line it's just going to convert that into a human readable string always like to put these in separate functions as opposed to doing it in line just makes it easier if you want to use them in multiple places or if you wanted to change the formatting simply it's much easier to find so all we're doing is the resolution width plus times plus the resolution height all right the next thing we need to do is add a listener to our button component so first off we'll get the button component and we'll use the on click event and we'll call add listener on that for your listener you can use a regular delegate or you can use the lambda function we're going to use a lambda function here the function we'll be calling will be set resolution and then we're going to call pass it the local variable index if we were to pass it i what would happen is that i changes each time you go through the for loop and so you'd end up passing it the the the, the highest number of i we also need to declare that variable index so we'll declare an in index and set it equal to i now we'll write our set resolution function all this function is going to do is set the resolution based on the index that we've passed to it we'll just look that resolution up in the resolutions array and set the screen to that so we're going to use screen set resolution then we're just going to grab resolutions i uh, sorry resolutions index dot width resolutions index dot height and then for the full screen parameter we'll set it to false easier to see the resolution changes with it in the window mode we'll fix that error here and change that to get components in children the last thing we need to do is add this button that we've created to its parent which will be the menu pan panel and we need to declare a variable for that menu panel again because we want to access it from the inspector but not from other scripts we'll tag it with serialize field we can save everything i'll leave that on screen for a second if you want to pause it Now we'll drop back to Unity. You can see that our variables are there on the menu script. So we'll drag in our button prefab and we'll drag in our menu panel. We'll hide that panel again. And then we'll build and run the project there's our button there you can see if we click on the button all of the resolutions that are available have come up and by choosing them we'll 
change the resolution to whichever we like. That's how to build a dynamic menu in under 10 minutes. Thank you for watching. Like, share or comment. Feel free to check out my other videos for or my blog for more tips and tricks on using Unity. Thank you.